All right, we uh, put the Wake Forest game to bed last night and, and started working uh, on the Virginia game. So we've got a, a big game coming up, another conference game, uh, another good opponent coming in into our stadium. And so we're going to have to do a great job of preparation this week and have our guys ready to play. What were some of the things after watching the film from Saturday that you did not like that is, is cause for concern? There were a lot of things. Uh, you know, one, we're still, we're still not making any game-changing plays in our special teams. You know, I think we, we've been very inconsistent there as far as uh, in all four of those big, you know, big four units. I think uh, defensively, you know, we still, uh, you know, we didn't get off the field on third downs like we want to. We, didn't, uh, we, we did not uh, stop them in the red zone. You know, we want to be at least around 50% in the red zone and making them kick field goals, and we didn't do that. Offensively, we were inconsistent. We made some big plays and explosive plays, but we, we weren't really consistent in grinding out any drives. There was a game change playing special teams where you got called back. Um, you got an explanation. No, I haven't. I haven't. Or... I haven't. I, I don't expect to get a, uh, an explanation. I really don't. I mean, uh, I mean, what, and what are they going to say anyway? That, that's going to make me feel better. How about that? What's going to make me feel better? Nothing. But wouldn't acknowledgement so, be good, knowing that they know it and they recognize it, because they, like you guys, watch game film improve. They have to do the same oh, thing. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, we've sent stuff in, and, and I'm sure they're aware of it by now. Uh, you know, so I, I'm, you know, I just haven't heard anything back. I'm sure they'll send me something. Okay. What's, well, the, what's this, normally like the time frame on that when you guys? It's usually by the end of the day. You know, we send it in uh, on Monday mornings, and we usually get it by the end of the day, maybe sometimes by Tuesday, because everybody, the whole league sends their stuff in on Monday. So, well, Just curious, how many plays will you send in like, on average on a Monday morning? Uh, it just depends. I mean, game to game. I, I, I mean, we'll, I, I'd say on average four or five different things that we may see in the film and we ask about. And, and it's not necessarily just things that are called. There may be other things that aren't called, and we're asking about them, you know, and want to know how they, you know, how they uh, perceive them. You mentioned you guys were really good at uh, that some of your explosive plays last week were because of Wake Forest blitzing. What were you guys able to do to kind of pick that up, and how do you feel like you did picking up those blitzes? Like well, uh, yeah, it, I mean, and we did. I, I thought our guys did a really good job. We spent a lot of time last week. Uh, you know, with our protection, with our backs and tight ends and, and running back, I mean, uh, O-line, you know, recognizing all the different blitzes and, and being able to pick it up. And I thought we did a pretty good job of, of that as, as we went through the game. There were there were a couple times that Queese got hit, uh, but it wasn't just necessarily blitzing. It was necessarily, it was maybe a one-on-one -on -one situation where a guy just gets beat. Is that an area that you can point, I know you mentioned earlier in the year that you guys felt like you were, your offense is better because you're better at third downs. Those are blitz downs. Is that is your offense? You notice your offensive line doing better at picking that stuff up in the backs. Is yeah, I, I think they're doing a really good job of it. Uh, that's not something that we you know we really worry about, but we work hard at it. You know, so that's why I don't spend a lot of time worrying about it because our old line running backs. You know, we work uh, you know blitz pickups. I mean, just about every day of the week. With the road Thursday game after this one, you got two games in the next ten days, and then you have to travel quickly. Is this week completely normal? You don't even pace things a little bit differently because you have that second game, or is everything 100% the way it uh, is? I, I mean, you know me. I'm not. I haven't thought just, about what's going to happen after this one yet. I'm, I'm, this is all I got. This is all I got. So yes, <laughs> it's going to be a normal week for us. What if Jalen Dalton brings to the defensive line that maybe didn't have necessarily uh, without him in that lineup? Uh, well, I mean, you know, uh, Jalen uh, brings some explosiveness. He's got really good power in his hips. Uh, he comes off the ball really well. And I'm not, I'm not saying the other guys don't do that, but I'm just telling you what his strengths are. And he can run really well. He can run. Did he? When you watched him on film, you said the other night, well, he made some plays, but there are also some obvious things. Yeah, he had some mistakes. I mean, he he did some things that we don't want him to do, and then he did some he did some really good things. How so encouraging! It was, I mean, for him to get his first game under his belt, I, I was I was pleased with him. How think, encouraging were the positives? Oh, they were really encouraging. I mean, it, and he'll only get better. And that's the first time he's ever played in college. So he's going to get better, just like a lot, a lot of these guys have had a lot of time to get better. So that's just his first shot. He'll be better this week. Was, was the hope going into the year to redshirt him? And would he have played, you think, this season if not for the injury? Uh, 
I mean, it, it, there, you know, we did not say we were going to redshirt him at the beginning of the year. That's not that that was not you know, we just didn't feel like he was ready at that time. But we thought as we were going, like I said, the last about three weeks, he was really coming on in practice, and we felt like before any injuries that we you know, hey, it, he, he's ready. He he can help us. It's time to play him. And and then when we had that on top of it, it made the it made the decision even easier. Coach, you said that you offensively you're going to focus on explosive plays and turnovers. I'm curious, are, are you interested in advanced metrics and, and any of those measures? Yeah, I mean, I, I think all of those things are really interesting. I mean, I, every time they put something out, I'm, I'm reading it. I mean, I'm interested in all that. I'm, I, I'm kind of fascinated by numbers and all those kind of things. So, uh, and I, I, I've been keeping a... You know, I kind of keep all of our stuff, and I've been doing it for as long as I've been running this offense, so I can compare over the years, you know, what things that I think are really important to our success. Uh, but you know, those two things for us, if we if we can win those two battles, the turnover battles, and we can win the explosive play battles, we're we're usually going to be pretty successful. What do you think is the best way to gauge an offense's efficiency? Is like points per possession, yards per play, any of those things? Uh, you know. I mean, most people are going to tell you points. I mean, because that's what it all boils down to. I mean, scoring offense and scoring defense are the two things that are really the only thing that's going to matter in the long run. I mean, so uh, I would probably, I guess I'd say those two. How heavy do you get into the advanced metrics and which advanced metrics do you have? Yeah, not, not necessarily so much in the season, you know, but in the off season, really, really, really try to break everything down and study it and just see, and not only just on us, but across the country, what the trend is, you know, where, where things are moving, uh, you know, what defenses are doing and how they're doing it. And, and or you're looking at it, it uh, you know, let's just say you're looking at, uh, you know, red zone defense and, and what teams that are being really, really successful in it and why their numbers. And then so you go back and you start studying them to see what they're doing down there. Then from the offensive side, you're looking, okay, so we need to be prepared for that. More teams are going to probably start doing this. We need to, how are we going to attack that? And where do you get your data from? Like, what do you guys work on websites or is it something special that the coaches have access no, to? No, no, no. Uh, I mean, a lot of it we do ourselves. Okay. You know, a lot of it we just do ourselves, so. Especially in the off season. Well, so, the time of possession is not an important metric, correct? I mean, you look at you, Mississippi, and Mississippi State, all four of you are in the bottom four in the country in time of possession and all four of you have won at least five games. Yeah, it's just a, a philosophy. I mean, there are, there are people out there that believe, you know, if you if you control the clock, you're going to win the game. I mean, and, and most of those guys are defensive guys that, that believe if they, you know, they can, they can keep their offense on the field, defense off the field. You know, I mean, it's a sound philosophy and, and very good. I mean, uh, but, uh, you know, I, 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 haven't old, I haven't necessarily ever felt that time of possession was, was the, the factor whether you're going to win or lose. I mean, it's it's more about turnovers and and than than that. So I hadn't really ever worried about it. You know, yeah. obviously you'd like to be out on the field as much as you can. But like the other night, I when when I found out we only had 59 plays, I was like, wow. You know, I mean, I, I just didn't feel that way in the game. You know, I mean, uh, but you know, we were scoring quickly. Have you gotten a sense over time that scoring quickly can put a psychological strain on the other team? Oh yeah, it, it so affects the other team. Sort of I mean, explosive plays. You know that'll that'll beat you down. You you give up explosive plays or catastrophics. I mean those will those will beat you down uh, defensively. You know because I mean you you can be playing good and you give up two or three catastrophics and and you lose a football game. Because that kind of nullifies the whole time possession thing right there. Yes, yes, definitely. Definitely. Larry, why have you been so good on third down this year offensively? Well, I think you know we've got experience. Uh, you know uh, we keep our package pretty simple. Our guys know what, what's expected. And, uh, you know, I, I think our quarterbacks are making good decisions. I think one thing that we're able to do, like in third medium, we're able to, you know, dial up a run or a pass. And so that makes it really difficult on a defense. Usually your third mediums and your third longs are, you know, 95%, 98% pass. You know, and, and because we're able to run the ball in some of those third medium situations, it, it helps us tremendously. Elijah Hood's uh, averaging 6.9 yards per carry. What's allowed him to be so efficient this year, uh, averaging almost seven yards a carry? Like, what's been working for him? 
Well, one, he's healthy this year. He's uh, hungry. He, he runs extremely hard. He's very physical. You know, he, he really dislikes being tackled. And he, uh, the offensive line is better. And, you know, I would say all the way across from the five offensive linemen to the tight ends to the receivers, everybody's doing a better job of blocking on the perimeter, downfield, all those things. You say he really dislikes being tackled. I'd imagine most offensive players feel that way. What about him makes yeah, you say I don't know. That? He, he really, I mean, he'll tell you, he, he doesn't like being tackled. He doesn't like, you know, so he's, he, you know, you, you'll know when he runs, he runs really uh, violent, real aggressive. I mean, he's, and not to say that everybody doesn't, but if you watch when he runs and, and when he makes contact with somebody, he's usually delivering, you know, all the blow. I mean, he, he's punishing the guy that's trying to tackle him. Know if he said something to you about Oh, he's told me. Yeah, he's told me before. He really does not like being tackled. What's that? This is, well, this is a, kind of a dumb question. Probably used to that, right? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> last two years, you guys have gotten off the slow starts in the first half. What's it like now sitting at the midpoint? You know, having a good. Are you talking about team? us as a team? Yeah. And then, uh, it feels a whole lot better. I mean, uh, you know, it, it's. It, you know, that's not a dumb question at all. I mean, it's 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 a it's a confidence booster for our football team. It it, it uh, you know makes them feel better about everything that we're doing. You know, everything. So you know, we're, we we continue to to keep doing the same things. You know, I talked about it with them the other day. Don't forget what it took to get to this point. You know, what you've done, what you put into it. It didn't just happen. You just walk out here and this thing, you know, it happened like this. And we want to keep doing that. So what's, uh, you know, uh, I mean, most people, they get complacent or they, you know, oh, things are going good, great, you know, I'll just relax. Well, that's not how you got here. And so we got to make sure that we continue to do the little things that we harp on on a daily basis. They get tired of me, you know, I say it every single day, just all these little things that I talk about every day. You know, most of the time it's going in one ear, not the other. You know, but I'm still saying it every day to reemphasize it that that's how you got to this point, and that's what it's going to take to keep being successful. Is it, is it easier to get across your message when things are going well as opposed to maybe when? Yeah, I mean, I would say so. Yes. Yeah. You know, you you hope that uh, you know because when you when things aren't going well, they, you know, no matter what you're saying, they may they're starting to question, you know, well, if if we're doing these things, why why is it working? You know. So, uh, you know, you can, you can push a lot harder and you can grind a lot harder when you're having success. Along the same lines, when you're playing an opponent that only has two wins on the season, how much more important is it that they don't become complacent after this much? Well, you're going you're gonna, to, if you really look at Virginia, I mean, the, the, their four losses are against teams that were all ranked at one point. So, I mean, they, they've, they've played a difficult schedule. Uh, they're, they're a, I mean, when I look at that film, I mean, I, I'm, I'm saying that's a good football team that's going to come in here. You know, now they, they lost four games, but you look at UCLA, Notre Dame, Pitt, Boise State, uh, you know, so I would say that they're a good football team, and they're going to come in here into our stadium. They're going to expect to win a football game. It's a conference game, you know, and we know what our goals are, and so we're going to have to prepare all the way until 3.30, and, and then we're going to have to kick it off and play well. When you're driving those points home to players who – at first glance, may not quite see it that way. How do you? I mean, I know you do it. I get them to the second glance real quick. <laughs> <laughs> how, would, how would you grade out the punting game for this past Saturday's game? Say again. How would you grade out your punting for this past Saturday? Well, heck, we what we net fifty yards, right? <laughs> uh, you know, so net, that's good. I wouldn't. That's not the way I want to do it. But uh, but we got it done. So uh, you know. They got he's got a few kicks under his belt now. Hopefully he'll get he'll get a little bit more confidence and he'll uh, he'll hit some balls like he really can. There have been some defensive adjustments at halftime in the last couple of games that really changed uh, how the game was going. <clears throat> how much more synchronized is this group with the staff than previous years? Well, I I, I just say that our, our defensive staff. One thing they do is they don't panic. You know, if if there's something that's going on in the game that maybe I mean because you know every offense. That you play, including our own, you, you try to change your tendencies within a season. So you're you're looking at what you've done over the past five weeks, and you're saying, okay, so this is what they're preparing for. So we're going to do this, this, and this to counter that. Well, that's what Wake did in the game. I mean, they did some really nice things, and so we had to make some adjustments. 
Uh, we didn't change what we did, but we had to make some adjustments. Plus, the players, you know, uh, example, they've been run, they've been running a lot of jet sweep stuff. They didn't run it once in the game. So, you know, now all that focus that you did during the week on jet sweep, now you got to hey, forget that they're not doing that. You need now this is what they're doing, and so. Once those guys really kind of lock in on it, and you explain to them what they're trying to, you know, how they're trying to attack us. They've done a really good job of responding. Trust factor they have in the staff right now seems to be extremely high. Yes, and, very much so. Dewan was talking about it after the game the other night. Just when they say, "Okay, you're going to change this stunt, you're going to change this front, or something like that," then they know they just do it. They don't question it. And that wasn't always the case previously. Yeah, <clears throat> I don't know. That's they. Uh, I know this. They. They. I think the. Uh, the staff thinks a lot of them, and they think a lot of the staff. So it's it's uh, it works out pretty well. That it? Oh, TJ right. Thorpe. TJ yeah. Thorpe. Yeah. That guy. Yeah, I know the thought someone was going to. I was supposed to ask that question. Yeah, because you because you were showing to us. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Right. All right. How excited are you uh, to to see him come in here and see what he's going to do against your team when you know what he did against his current team for your win last season? Well, I mean, I'm I'm. Uh, you know, I, I don't. I really haven't had a chance to really look and see what he's done this year. Uh, I know. I think he had gotten injured at the beginning of the year, and I don't know. He may have missed some time. But I mean, t we know TJ is a very gifted player. He can run. He can catch. He can uh, run after the catch. He can catch. I mean, you know, he's a good player. So our guys are going to. You know, the one thing is they all know him. You know, a lot of them are friends. I mean, so they all know him. So, you know, it, I imagine it for them. It'll be a lot of fun. Do you expect that they may that Virginia may try and use him? I would imagine they would. Heightened capacity. Sure. Can I finish my question? Yeah, I would think they would in, in every way they can. Could you uh, touch on why things didn't work out for him here in terms of you know, him finishing out his plan? Well, I don't know that they didn't work out for him. I mean, I think he just, uh, you know, he graduated and uh, decided to move on and, and, and go into another situation. I think his, you know, his career, other than all the injuries that he had, were, you know, he had, he had a pretty good uh, career here. Just with all those injuries, was it made it really tough. All right, thank y'all. Thanks, Coach. Okay.